Hello everyone, my name is Kodamora and welcome to episode 16 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. Now, if you take a look at our bullets when they hit the meteor, they, they disappear and they damage the meteor just fine, but in my opinion they look pretty darn boring. We need some sort of visual effect as soon as a bullet hits something. So that's what we're going to create today, it's going to be really quick. To do that, we're going to make a new scene. It'll be a 2D scene, of course. And we're going to add a node to this scene, and it is just going to be a sprite in my case. And I'll right click my sprite, make it the scene root, and I'll just delete the node 2D, standard like we've always done. Now you could use a particle system for this, just like kind of how we did the star field in our gameplay here, all these stars. In fact, we're going to use a technique for that for when our meteors break, but we'll get to that in the next episode. But for my bullet effect, I'm just going to have a single sprite, and it is going to be my laser red shot right here. So I will drag my laser red shot image into the texture here of my sprite, and that's what I want to appear for a short amount of time whenever a bullet hits something. So I'm going to rename this sprite up here to bullet effect, like so, and we can save this scene. I'm going to save it in the bullet folder as bullet effect. So without doing anything else to this, let's get this effect made whenever a bullet hits something. So in our normal bullet scene here, we'll go into the script of the bullet, and we know right here is where we actually damage something and then remove ourselves. Well, if we're damaging something, then we want our little bullet effect to appear to make it look like the bullet actually hit. In order to make an instance of our bullet effect scene, we need to preload it. Remember, we did that in the player class because we had to preload the bullet in order to create instances of our bullet. So in my bullet script here, we are going to create a variable called p bullet effect, and that is going to be equal to preload of our bullet effect scene. So that'll allow us to get an instance of our bullet effect whenever we need to. It'll preload everything so it's ready to go at the start of our game. So now, whenever our bullet damages something and disappears, we're going to create a new bullet effect. So var bullet effect equals our p bullet effect, our preloaded bullet effect dot instance, and it'll create a new instance of the bullet. Next we have to set the position of this bullet effect to be the same position of this bullet that is currently breaking. So we'll do bullet effect dot position equals whatever the position of this bullet is. And next, we have to actually add this bullet effect to the game. Now, we could use the method that we did in the player, and we could do get tree dot current scene and then add a child node. Or we could do something a little similar, and we can simply get the parent node of this bullet by doing get underscore parent, and then we can simply add any node we want to our parent node. In this case, we'll add our bullet effect. So basically, wherever this bullet was in the scene tree, we don't care. We're just going to get whatever parent it was. Say this sprite was our bullet, the parent is this bullet node here. So it'll get the parent of the bullet and just add our effect to the tree instead, and then we'll remove the bullet itself. So let's see if this does what we expect. You can see, yep, whenever the bullets hit, they create these little bullet effects. Obviously, they shouldn't be staying on screen that way, and they're way too big. So I'm going to switch over to my 2D view on my bullet effect here. And the first thing I'm going to do is make this a little bit smaller. So I'll change my scale to like, I don't know, 20% of its size. I'll make it way smaller. That might still be too big. And we're going to attach a script to our bullet effect. So we'll add a script, bullet effect.gd, and we'll create it here. And we can simply delete everything except for the extends sprite. Now what we're going to do is whenever this bullet effect enters the screen, we're simply going to start a timer for a very short amount of time, and once that timer expires, we'll remove the effect. So we'll add a child node, and we'll add a timer to our bullet effect. And we are going to set this one as one shot enabled, so it's not going to restart, and we're going to check auto start. We want it to automatically start as soon as our bullet effect here enters the scene tree, because we're only using this timer once and then deleting the effect as soon as it's done. So we're going to automatically start the timer. Next, on our timer node, we're going to connect the timeout signal 
Remember that's emitted whenever the timer expires, whenever it finishes. We're going to connect that to our bullet effect script that we just created. So whenever this timer ends, we will simply queue free ourselves. We'll basically remove the bullet effect at the end of the current frame. And it's as simple as that. Now you can go into your timer node in the inspector and set how long you want that effect to appear for. We'll set it to one second right now to make it really long just so we can see it working. And you'll notice you can see those tiny effects are appearing and they're staying on screen for one second. So I actually made my effect a little too small. Let me make it 40% of its size instead, a little bit bigger. And we'll make them appear only for point, I don't know, zero five seconds. We'll see how that looks. This is just all personal preference at this point. It doesn't look too, too bad. You can see those effects are kind of spawning really quickly and then disappearing sort of as soon as a bullet's hit. I think we might be able to make this a little bit better. For instance, I'll make mine a little bit smaller. We'll try 0.3, I think that might be good. And maybe a little bit shorter, maybe 0.04 seconds. And that's all there is to it. Get these looking good to your personal preference. And yeah, we are done. There are, of course, a couple of improvements that we could make to this. For example, you can see kind of up here, the effect is happening a little bit before the meteor, but, we'll, but we will worry about that little stuff toward the end of this series. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.